Hello students. Today we are going to study about personality in consumer behavior. So let's know the definition of personality. So personality can be defined as those inner characteristics that determines and reflects how an individual responds to his or her environment. If you see the highlighted line here, that is inner characteristics, which determines and reflects about on the individual personality and he or she reacts on to the particular environment. Those characteristics said are attributes. So we can say those are attributes here. Okay. Traits, qualities of the factors and mannerism. So that distinguish one individual from the other. So these all aspects matters a lot in personality and these attributes, traits, qualities, uh, factors and mannerism ultimately uh, reflects on individual personality. So how they react in the environment. So let's see the nature of uh, personality. Personality reflects individual differences. Yes. So personality uh, because inner characteristics that constitute an individual's personality are a unique combination of factors. So no, no two individuals are exactly alike. So nevertheless, uh, many individuals may possess a single or even a few personality characteristics, but not others. So every individual has their own personality and they are different in kind. Next is a personality is consistent and enduring. So generally, an individual personality tends to be both consistent and generally enduring. For example, in, uh, there are siblings who comments that her sister has always cared a great deal about her thoughts from the time she was a toddler. So it is a supporting contention that personality has both consistency and even endurance also. So this continues longer time. So you can even look at uh, your own example. You can find yourself that since childhood you uh, uh, believe in some such type of personality by right? choosing the color of the uh, your dress material or shirts or pants or uh, purchasing type of colors of different different items. So personality is consistent and enduring. And next is personality can change. So personality generally is enduring. Under certain circumstances, personality changes. Uh, for instance, uh, major life events such as marriage, after marriage, you will change yourself. And the birth of a child, again, it brings a change. Okay. Or a job if, which you are doing, or if you change the job, or a professional uh, strongly affect your personality. So sometimes personality can also be changed, depends on situations. So now we will move to uh, understand there are theories which are provided for supporting the personality. So let's study the psychoanalytic theory, Freudian theory. So we call it as Freudian theory also and psychoanalytical theory also. So Freudian talk about the thing in his uh, model or a theory. So he first talk about ID and then comes the super ego and then is the ego. So if you just see here, I want to do what the, I want to do that now. So immediate satisfaction, we will study the things in detail. If you look at super ego, it's not right to do that. So here comes the beliefs and manners. Okay. And uh, next ego, maybe we can compromise. Okay, let's understand one by one. So what uh, ID. So ID is responsible for our primitive drives and urges. Okay, operating on the pleasure principle. So ID always work on pleasure principle. The ID avoids tension and seeks pleasure. So immediately if you're feeling hungry, so you want immediate uh, satisfaction for that and you want immediate relief from that particular tension and you seek the pleasure. It is also referred to as an unconscious mind. So you, you people also have gone through this ID process. Next comes the ego. So ego is the conscious mind. 
it operates on the reality principle okay so the ego develops from the id because there are limitations if the id operates in the real world so this is an important one the ego develops from the id because there are limitation if the id operates in the real world okay the ego is composed of perceptions the whatever perception an individual is having a thoughts a memories and the feelings of the consumer or a personality so it provides a person with a sense of identity and continuity so here it plays an important role that sense of identity and continuity okay as an internal drive and conscious the ego is the executive aspect of the personality that matters a lot in individual now third we are going to know about super ego so super ego is the moral and ethical dimension so you people comes through for example you might have seen me talking in the classroom that don't wear a tear jeans because that Uh, sometimes it acts like against moral and ethical so dimension of the human psychic structure it controls the basic desire of the id id might be anything but that could be controlled with the super ego the super ego uh, can interrupt the social system and influence the ego also it also helps individuals strive for perfection and pursue goals that match the morality parameters set by society and culture so we are living in a society and which is surrounded by the morality and uh, even the uh, we can say beliefs so according to that this super ego helps her to select those uh, goods and services which will be accepted by the society and culture so id might go for anything but super ego and ego helps us to control it by uh, morality and ethical dimension now let's move so if you see here the represented in the model are biological forces are id human consciousness is considered as an ego and societal forces that we call a culture and society so that fall under super ego so these three factors dictate personality development and they influence human motivation and needs if you come to know the id okay the id we also already know the id uses the most primitive of thinking process so basically biological urges so example if i say that i already mentioned hunger self protection that is immediate required operate on the pleasure principle okay seeks pleasure and avoids pain that we have seen in the definition i want what i want now okay and the id operates completely at an unconscious level so no direct contact with the reality so this is about id now moving to the ego the ego consists of a conscious faculty for perceiving and dealing intelligently with the reality so we have seen in the definition and what how actually ego works so it works with the reality concept the ego acts as a mediator between the id and the super ego so super ego talks about the morality acceptance by the society and the culture where id is unconscious so in between this the ego acts so the ego is uh, partly conscious deals with the demands of reality and makes rational decision okay where it comes to id there is no nothing it's all about unconscious but when it comes to ego it is partly conscious and makes rational decision now moving to the uh, super ego super ego the moral part of personality that we have already seen okay so internalized rules of parents and society which is developed in the kid or you can say he or she or a consumer super ego consists of two parts one is uh, conscience so notion of right or wrong ego ideal how we ideally like to be so these two aspects matters a lot in the super ego the super ego constrain us from uh, gratifying every impulse example murder okay because they are immoral and not because we might, might get be caught so stealing theft okay harming others so these are all fall under uh, very bad things immoral thing so we should not 
do that rather than we people might say something but actually we have learned it that these are immoral so it is partly conscious partly unconscious so we have discussed about uh, the freudian's theory so i hope you have understand it so please go through textbooks and uh, read something so you can understand it fully thank you